What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for the final episode of our Twitter Unpopular Opinions, episode number six. It's been a long haul. Have you enjoyed it, Sim? Yeah, it's been, it's been great. It's been great. I've been <laughs> loving your opinions, all the wacky and wonderful opinions. Let's get more. I want more. All right. Can't get enough. This is the last episode. we got about six or seven opinions to bring you. And let's start off from Spursy Paul. Jermaine Genus was, still is, the most overrated midfielder in English football history and even worse pundit. Oh, that's disrespect for his punditry. I don't <laughs> mind him as a pundit. I think sometimes he can, he can be a bit milk toast. He doesn't really give much of an opinion when he's a pundit. But I think he's all right. He's, he's actually more pro Spurs than most other guys. Definitely, I like Jermaine Genius as a pundit. Yeah, I don't I, have I, a problem I, with him. I've got no problem with him as a but pundit. But I would say that he that as a midfielder, he was a bit overrated. Who rated him? Um, a lot of Spurs. At the, at the time, I think a lot of people rated him. He was, um, you know, came through the ranks at Newcastle. He mm -hmm. was very highly rated when mm -hmm. he was coming through the ranks there. Came to us in a, what was it, fairly big money move at, for the Seven time. Seven million, yeah. Um, and he was rated when he came to us. I think he's, he was a big game player, yeah, like well, you mentioned before. But when he left, he wasn't. He, like, by yeah. the end of his career, I don't think he, many people thought he was that great. Mm, barely got on the Spurs team. And I think uh, there was a time when he, you know, under when England had Capello as manager and we, uh, we were won, when we won the League Cup. That was probably his best time as, at Spurs. But I don't think it on was his ever, day he was great. Yeah, but I don't think he was ever rated amongst the best centre mids in, the, in England or anything like that. I Doesn't think mean he, he wasn't overrated. Yeah, maybe. Well, <laughs> unless you'll say he was like, the, like one of the worst in the league. I don't think it was that bad. I think it was just an average Premier League midfielder, and I think most people saw him as that. Mm. All right, moving on to Liamo two forty, and he says you're going to like this one, Sim, or not Ooh. like it. He says Berbatov should not be considered a Spurs legend. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> he should not. It depends how you clar how you. Well, we all know the way he left. Look, we all know the way he left. He only he only stayed, stayed two seasons, but Klinsman only had to stay two seasons. You know, Ginola was only there for a couple. Was yeah, on there but for none a of them years. left like Berbatov left. Yeah, but we were rubbish. We, I don't blame him. I, 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 look, obviously, I blame him a bit for um, refusing to play. That's obviously not cool, but. When he he was playing, he was I'm sorry at the time he was the best striker in the league pretty much, or one of the best strikers. One in of the, the league. best strikers in the world at the in time, the, in, especially in Europe. And we were just floundering. We just finished eighth and we just finished eleventh. Um, we finished fifth and eleventh, and we were floundering as a team. We were going, we had no direction. We had Juan de Ramos in charge, who would be sacked a few months later. And when Man United come calling in a big money move, I don't blame him for wanting to to go to the Man United at, at the time. It does sour his time at Spurs, but is he a legend? Is he a legend? I mean, how good he was. I just love watching. Yeah, I just love. I, mean, I don't. Sorry, I'm not going to apologise for loving Berbatov. I'm sorry. I hated him when he left. I absolutely hated him. Uh, I like. I never of, blamed him. I never blamed him. I kind of forgave him when he came back for Ledley's testimonial. Mm. That was the kind of moment where I was just like, you I know never, what? If I Ledley can bring you back, we can all bring you back. I never hated Berbatov for leaving because I under completely understood it. I think that the club were a mess. It's at not. The time. It's not. It's not that he left. It's the way he left. Yeah, we're, but. He, but you know, with Levy, with Levy's brinkmanship was probably his only option. Mm. Well, you know how Levy is a tough negotiator. Is he a legend or not? not? <sighs> yes, for the way he, for the way he played and how good he was, he's one of the best strikers ever played for Tottenham. How can you say he's not a legend? All right. Let I me think know he's the, a legend. I think let he's a me legend. know in the comment section below: Is Berbatov a legend? And he won a trophy. He won a trophy. Yeah, scored in the final. Yeah. Come on, uh, our last trophy that we won. Exactly. Uh, let's Legend. go on. Jack second the second or something, and he says bringing back Bale would be a blessing in disguise. We will see the Bale that we saw in 2012, uh, no matter his age. No, we're never going to see that Bale in 2012. That's not going to happen. I would say that I would consider bringing Bale back if the deal was right. If we're not spending too much money on it, if we're if we're not like spending 400 grand a week or something then I'd consider bringing him back because I do think it might be worth the risk. But I, th I just can't see it. He's on 600 grand a week. He's uh, he's happy to be sitting sitting on the bench. And unless the deal was right, there's no point bringing him back. Uh, but I wouldn't. obviously I'd be excited if he came back. I don't know about a blessing in disguise. I don't know about that. I mean, we were speaking off, air, off camera um, about a few minutes ago mm. and we were saying that, I was saying how I don't really want him back just because you just don't know what you're going to get with him. And, you don't know. You and, don't know how he's going to play. And if you're going, and if you're paying, if even if Real Madrid are paying three quarters of his wages, we're still paying him. He's still our top owner at the club. Um, and is is that what we really need? Someone like that to come in when he hasn't been consistently could, good for two, three years. I think you give the place a lift. 
Maybe. I think Kane. I think Kane will get more. Uh, make the players excited to have that kind of name around the club. And obviously, I don't. I don't want us to break the bank to get him in. I think that wouldn't be worth it. I think it's too much of a risk. But I think if uh, we, if, we, if we get a, fi- a deal financially right for the club, where we're not putting too much risk in into the deal, then I think it would be a good move. I really do, and I think he still has the quality to even even if he plays twenty five games a season. Potentially, he still has that quality to really make make a difference. Right. I'm hoping so. But look, it ain't happening, so there's no point <laughs> talking about it. All right, let's move on to Joy96542875. And he says, it's something that we've been talking about. He says, Levy will sell Aurier and will have no choice but to play Tanganga at right back. No. <laughs> no, no, you know it's a possibility. You know it's a possibility. Don't want more Tanganga. Look, I love Tanganga. And I'm so happy to sign a contract. But I don't want him as my right back. I'm sorry, I don't want it. He's not a fullback. We need a full fullback to play in fullback. We can't sell Aurier. And again, how have we gone from selling Walker? using his backup saying Trippy using his backup and then saying Aurier and then using his backup now can we not just improve can we not just sign an improved player at fullback please Levy no. just do it <laughs> um, and last but not least this is from our friend David Walliams again uh, the player he wants to bring in is a bit better than the ones before it is, is it? if we sell Aurier go for Matt Doherty <laughs> Matt Doherty okay <laughs> I will take Matt Doherty I'll so take right. my, brilliant player but I, I think Wolves are in a position now where they yeah. can they, they can demand 40, 50 million for him probably so they're not going to sell, sell him to us for cheap and they probably see us as competition because we only just about finished ahead of them last season mm. so they probably aren't seeing us they're probably, they're probably seeing us as like direct rivals us most of the season until the last game they probably see us as direct rivals so why would they they wouldn't give us a good deal for him so I can't see Levy splashing out 40 million on him but Great saying player, that I would I, I, think it's a gr- I think is he's a good right back but I have a feeling he might be a bit like Marcus Alonso, where he really shines because he's a, a right wing back as opposed to a right back, and he has he he's, he has cover behind him, so he's allowed to go forward a lot and get those goals and assists like Marcus Alonso. Because mm. whenever Marcus Alonso goes into a back four, he's awful, yeah. he's shocking, and he really gets found out. Yeah. So I wonder if Doherty's like that. But having said that, he's been great for two years for Wolves, so I'd obviously like him. Goals, assists, and he That's pops the thing. up with so many important assists. And he stuff. does, yeah, he's really good at going forward. So I'd, I'd take him for sure. I think he's a high quality. Player. All right. Well, there you have it. That is the end of our Twitter Unpopular Opinions. Like, subscribe, and comment anything that you thought about any of the Unpopular Opinions of all six episodes. And as always, come, come on, on, you Spurs. Spurs.